they decided to split up and explore different parts of the asylum. Rajesh and Priya went to the left wing, where the male wards were located. Ravi and Neha went to the right wing, where the female wards were located. Karan stayed in the lobby, where he set up his laptop and connected it to the cameras and devices. They agreed to communicate with each other through the walkie-talkies and meet back in the lobby after an hour. Rajesh and Priya walked down the left hallway. They saw many rooms with metal bars on the windows and doors. Some of the rooms were locked, some were open. They heard strange noises coming from inside, moans, screams, laughter, crying. They entered one of the open rooms. It was a small cell with a bed, a table, a chair, and a sink. There was a patient file on the table. Rajesh picked it up and read it. Patient name, Ramesh Kumar. Diagnosis, Schizophrenia. Treatment, Electroconvulsive Therapy, Lobotomy, Isolation. He looked at Priya. This guy was tortured here, he said. Priya nodded. They did horrible things to these people, she said. She pointed to the wall behind the bed. There was a large blood stain on it. Look at that, she said. Rajesh zoomed his camera on it. Maybe he killed himself or someone else, he said. He turned on his EMF meter and scanned the room. Let's see if we can get any readings here, he said. He moved the device around the room. It beeped and flashed as it detected electromagnetic fields. There is something here, he said. He placed the device on the table and took out his recorder. Hello, is anyone here? Can you hear us? We are not here to harm you. We just want to talk to you. What is your name? He asked. He waited for a few seconds, then played back the recording. There was no response, only static. He tried again. Hello, can you please say something? We want to help you. How did you die? What happened to you? He asked. He played back the recording again. This time, there was a faint voice that said, Help me, help me. They hurt me, they cut me, they burned me. Rajesh and Priya gasped as they heard it. Did you hear that? Rajesh asked. Yes, I did. That was creepy, Priya said. They looked at each other with shock and excitement. They had just captured an EVP, an electronic voice phenomenon. A voice from beyond the grave. They decided to continue their investigation in the other rooms of the left wing. Meanwhile, Ravi and Neha walked down the right hallway. They saw similar rooms as Rajesh and Priya, but with female patients instead of male ones. They also heard weird noises coming from inside, whispers, giggles, sobbing, singing. They entered one of the open rooms. It was a larger cell with two beds, two tables, two chairs, and two sinks. There were two patient files on one of the tables. Ravi picked them up and read them. Patient name, Radha Devi. Diagnosis, hysteria. Treatment, hydrotherapy, insulin shock therapy, ovariectomy. Patient name, Sita Devi. Diagnosis, hysteria. Treatment, hydrotherapy, insulin shock therapy, ovariectomy. He looked at Neha. These two were sisters, he said. Neha nodded. They were diagnosed with hysteria, which was a common label for women who showed any signs of emotion or rebellion, she said. She pointed to the wall behind one of the beds. There was a large hole on it. Look at that, she said. Ravi zoomed his camera on it. Maybe they tried to escape or someone tried to break in, he said. He turned on his thermometer and scanned the room. Let's see if we can get any temperature changes here, he said. He moved the device around the room. It showed different readings as it detected hot and cold spots. There is something here, he said. He placed the device on one of the tables and took out his infrared. Goggles. Hello, is anyone here? Can you see us? We are not here to harm you. We just want to see you. What are your names? He asked. He put on his goggles and looked around the room. He saw two figures standing in front of him. They were transparent and glowing in red. They looked like women wearing white gowns. They had long hair and sad eyes. They were holding hands. They were Radha and Sita Devi, the ghost sisters of the asylum. Seeing the ghost sisters sent shivers down the bodies of Ravi and Neha, 
Neha almost fainted on the spot while Ravi had to carry her out of that place. Karan stayed in the lobby where he set up his laptop and connected it to the cameras and devices. He was monitoring the feeds from the other team members and recording their activities. He was also checking the internet for any information about the asylum and its history. He found out that the asylum was built in 1923 by the British colonial government as a place to isolate and treat the mentally ill. It was part of a larger project to improve the health and hygiene of the Indian population. However, the asylum soon became notorious for its brutal and inhumane practices. The patients were subjected to horrific experiments, torture, and abuse by the staff. Many of them died or went insane. The asylum was shut down in 1953 after a series of scandals and riots. Since then, it has been left to decay and rot. He also found out that the island was off limits to the public and guarded by the navy. It was rumored that the island was used for secret military operations and experiments. Some people claimed that they saw strange lights and sounds coming from the island at night. Others claimed that they saw ghosts and monsters roaming around the island. He was fascinated by what he learned. He decided to share his findings with his team members through the walkie-talkies. "Hey guys, I have some interesting information for you," he said. He told them what he had discovered about the asylum and the island. They were amazed by what they heard. "Wow, that's crazy," Rajesh said. "That's creepy," Priya said. "That's sad," Ravi said. "That's scary," Neha said. They thanked Karan for his research and continued their investigation in their respective areas. However, as they did so, they started to experience more terrifying encounters with the past life spirits of former patients who suffered gruesome fates. They saw apparitions, shadows, orbs, and mists. They heard voices, footsteps, bangs, and knocks. They felt touches, pushes, scratches, and bites. They smelled blood, smoke, and decay. They were scared, but they also wanted to document their evidence and communicate with the spirits. They tried to ask them questions such as, "Who are you? What do you want? How did you die? Can we help you?" They received various responses such as, "Help me, leave me alone, go away, please stay with me." They were confused by what they heard. They did not know if the spirits were friendly or hostile, if they wanted their help or harm. They decided to regroup in the lobby after an hour and discuss their findings. However, when they tried to leave their areas, they found out that they were trapped. The doors were locked, the windows were barred, the hallways were blocked. They tried to call Karan for help, but they could not reach him. They realized that they were not alone in the asylum. Someone or something was watching them. Someone or something was playing with them. Someone or something was hunting them. Rajesh and Priya tried to break the door of the room they were in, but it was too strong. They looked for another way out, but they found none. They were trapped. They heard a loud laugh coming from outside the door. It was a man's voice, but it sounded twisted and evil. "Hello, my friends. I hope you are enjoying your stay in my asylum," the voice said. "Who are you? What do you want from us?" Rajesh asked. "I am your friend." The one who invited you here, the one who gave you the map and the key, the one who is watching you right now, the voice said. Why did you do this? Why did you trap us here? Priya asked. Because I wanted to have some fun. Because I wanted to see how you would react to my little game. Because I wanted to test your courage and your faith, the voice said. What game? What are you talking about? Rajesh asked. The game of life and death, the game of truth and lies, the game of fear and faith, the game that you have been playing since you entered this asylum, the voice said. What do you mean? Priya asked. I mean that everything that you have seen, heard, felt and smelled in this asylum is part of my game. I have been controlling everything that happens here. I have been manipulating the spirits, the devices, the environment and even your minds the voice said you are lying you are crazy you can't do that rajesh said oh but i can and i have and i will show you how the voice said 
The voice then revealed his identity and his plan. He was Dr. Ashok Sehgal, the former director of the asylum. He was also a mad scientist who had conducted horrific experiments on the patients and himself. He had discovered a way to manipulate the electromagnetic fields and frequencies that govern the physical and spiritual realms. He had used this knowledge to create a device that could control the spirits of the dead, as well as influence the minds of the living. He had also faked his own death and escaped from the asylum before it was shut down. He had hidden on the island for decades, perfecting his device and his skills. He had also kept an eye on the outside world, looking for potential victims for his game. He had chosen Rajesh and his team because they were paranormal investigators who claimed to be experts in their field. He had contacted them through a fake email account and lured them to the island with false information and promises. He had given them a map and a key that were rigged with microchips that allowed him to track their movements and actions. He had also hacked into their cameras, microphones, recorders, EMF meters, thermometers, infrared goggles, flashlights, batteries, walkie-talkies, etc., and used them to create fake evidence and phenomena for them to witness and document. He had also used his device to manipulate the spirits of the former patients who still haunted the asylum. He had made them appear, disappear, speak, move, touch, etc., according to his will. He had also used his device to influence their minds and emotions. He had made them see, hear, feel, and smell things that were not there or exaggerated. He had also made them experience fear, anger, sadness, confusion, etc., according to his will. He had done all this to play with them, to test them, to challenge them. He wanted to see how they would react to his game. He wanted to see if they would believe or doubt their senses and devices. He wanted to see if they would trust or betray each other. He wanted to see if they would keep or lose their faith in themselves and in God. He wanted to see if they would live or die. He told them that he had given them a choice, to play or not to play. If they chose not to play, he would let them go free. But they would have to admit that they were frauds and cowards who did not deserve to be paranormal investigators. If they chose to play, he would give them a chance to escape. But they would have to face his final challenge, a series of questions that would determine their fate. The questions would be based on their knowledge of the asylum's history and secrets, as well as their personal beliefs and values. The questions would be hard and tricky. They would have to answer them correctly and quickly. If they answered correctly, he would unlock one of the doors in the asylum that would lead them to freedom. If they answered incorrectly or too slowly, he would activate one of the traps in the asylum that would kill them instantly. He told them that they had 10 minutes to decide whether they wanted to play or not. He then went silent and left them alone in their rooms. Rajesh and Priya looked at each other with horror and disbelief. They did not know what to do. They did not know what to believe. They did not know who to trust. They did not know how to escape. They were scared. They were angry. They were desperate. They were hopeless. They were helpless. Rajesh and Priya decided to play the game. They thought that it was their only chance to escape. They hoped that they could outsmart drive. Sehgal and his device. They also hoped that their team members were still alive and would join them soon. They contacted Drive. Sehgal threw the walkie-talkie and told him their decision. Very well. I am glad that you have chosen to play. Let the game begin, Drive. Sehgal said. He then asked them the first question. What is the name of the British governor who inaugurated the asylum in 1923? Rajesh and Priya looked at each other. They tried to remember what Karan had told them about the asylum's history. They thought that they had heard the name before, but they were not sure. They guessed, Lord Irwin. Doctor. Sehgal laughed. Wrong. The correct answer is Lord Redding. You have failed the first question. Now, you will face the first trap. He pressed a button on his device. Suddenly, the room was filled with gas. It was a poisonous gas that caused suffocation, asphyxiation and paralysis. Rajesh and Priya coughed and choked as they breathed in the gas. They felt their lungs burning and their muscles weakening. They fell to the floor, unable to move or speak. 
They looked at each other with fear and pain in their eyes. They knew that they were going to die. They said their final words in their minds, I love you. I love you too. They closed their eyes and lost consciousness. They were dead. Doctor. Sehgal smiled as he watched them on his screen. Game over, he said.